So many of us suffer from knee pain and no one wants to undergo knee surgery. Dr. Eric Lee is an orthopedic surgeon and he's here to discuss a new, less invasive surgical treatment. It seems like everybody has knee pain these days. Is this the most common type of orthopedic surgery, knee surgery? It's certainly one of the most common uh, problems that we see in our office. There are over 700,000 total knee replacements performed just in the United States every year. 700,000? Yes. Wow. So not everybody need, if they start having uh, knee problems, is there a conservative treatment that you, you, know, you normally try first? Like, what would you do? I'm a conservative guy by nature, so I work from least invasive to more invasive. Yeah. I think the very common things that surgeons will prescribe for patients that have knee pain are anti-inflammatories to stop the swelling and the pain. Glucosamine sometimes is a chondroprotective agent. What, what do you mean chondroprotective? What does it mean? To protect the cartilage, the cartilage? Uh, inside the knee. Uh, that gets degenerated in osteoarthritis or degenerative I mean, arthritis. The supplements you take, glucosamine? Correct. Okay. There are some studies that show that it can help, and yeah. other studies show that it may not help, but certainly there are no studies that show that it hurts patients. Okay. I think a lot of people have heard about the injections, and injection therapy for treatment of knee osteoarthritis is very common, and it comes predominantly in three flavors if you will, uh, the steroid shot or cortisone injection, okay. visco supplementation or hyaluronic acid, it's a gel that gets injected as a series of three or five shots, and also the newer things such as platelet-rich plasma, which is gaining more and more popularity due to the literature behind it supporting it. Is it true that if you inject the steroids too much, you can actually damage the cartilage? Does that happen? Correct. Yeah. Uh, most steroid preparations are a combination of a steroid uh, and a numbing agent like lidocaine mm -hmm. or marcaine. The local anesthetics or those numbing agents actually have chondrotoxic properties or are toxic to the cartilage cells when they check it in the laboratory studies. Oh, is that right? Huh? And the steroids can inhibit inflammation so potently that you can impair the body's response to heal a, an injury and predispose ligaments and tendons actually to rupture. Can you do all th uh, two together, like the steroid and the viscous agents at the same time? That's a great question. Most often, we will use a steroid injection if patients are in severe acute pain because the onset is rapid and immediate and those patients feel great within a day or two. The gels or visco supplementation often takes three or four weeks to kick in. Oh, does it? Really? But the advantage of that type of system is that it can sometimes last six or 12 months. And so the longevity of the relief is what you're really after by using the, the gel injections or the hyaluronic acid. And the platelet rich, uh, the platelets are the little cells that are in our blood. They have some properties in them. Instead of not only that they do clotting, but they have some other properties. What, what is that? Correct, the platelets are a portion of the blood. And the way that the technology works is that we take blood from the patient. We spin it down in a centrifuge to concentrate the platelets and the growth factors. The growth factors, uh, by and large, are within certain areas of the platelet cell. Mm -hmm. And by re-injecting that into the knee joint, it can improve arthritic pain. Uh, and the idea is it can stimulate some sort of healing response as well. Now, the name is macoplasty. What does that mean, macoplasty? Macoplasty is kind of a play on the word arthroplasty. And arthroplasty for orthopedic surgeons means joint replacement. And Mako Surgical is the name of the company that developed this technology, and so they called their joint replacement Makoplasty. This is partial, meaning you're only going to fix a piece of the joint rather than the whole joint, right? Correct. The knee we like to think of as having three main compartments. This would be a left knee, and there is the kneecap joint compartment called the patellofemoral compartment because of the patella being the kneecap and the femur being the thigh bone. We have the medial compartment which is the inner portion of the knee mm -hmm. between the leg bone called the tibia and the thigh bone called the femur and also of course the lateral compartment which is the outside of the joint mm -hmm. between the femur and the tibia. So when you do this, you, you, how is this different than regular knee surgery? How, how, what do you do differently? In a complete or total knee replacement, the end of the thigh bone or femur is cut typically with a jig and the entire end is replaced by a single piece or implant. Likewise, the top of the leg bone or tibia, a small portion is cut off the top and again, a single implant 
is placed on top of the, uh, the tibia. In between goes a plastic insert as a bearing surface because mm -hmm. you don't want metal rubbing on metal. So you have metal rubbing on plastic and that plastic insert comes in varying thicknesses to restore the proper tension of the knee joint so it's not too loose or it's not too tight. And lastly, because the back of the kneecap uh, will ride on the, the thigh bone or femur, we replace the back surface of the kneecap with a plastic button. So it, when it, everything that glides together now in a complete knee replacement has been replaced. So with, with a partial, do you always replace the kneecap too or no? A partial knee replacement you can think of as we stated the knee having three compartments. If the disease or arthritis is localized mm -hmm. to one of those three compartments, then we only replace Place that one. What's needed, I see. I tell patients it's kind of like if you brought your car into the tire shop, and one, because one of the tires is very, very bald, but the other three are okay, you're not going to replace all four. You just replace the one that's very bald. So you want to do just what's needed. And is this quicker? Uh, it's computerized, right? Is, how does it differ from if you go in there and just sawn things open? Actually, uh, this tends to be, to, to, to be more time intensive than a complete or total really? knee replacement. And again, I tell patients it's kind of like if you had a tile floor and you were replacing the whole floor, it's pretty easy. You just take out everything that's not right yeah, and right. you just place the whole floor down. Whereas a partial knee replacement, what you put in, if you place the tiles, just replacing a couple of those tiles in the floor, it has to match the rest Precise, of yeah. the anatomy. And likewise, in the knee, just replacing that one diseased portion, it still has to maintain the proper ligament balance and respect the rest of the anatomy of the patient's knee. And the computer lines this up for you and tells you where? Uh, yeah, the way that this technology uh, works is that a preoperative CT scan is obtained of the knee. Uh, a CT is a very specialized three-dimensional x-ray. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is fed into a computer program. Uh, and we can place the implants in the computer virtually uh, before we ever even get started. So there's a very good preoperative plan that recreates the patient's anatomy, which is almost always the goal for orthopedic surgeons. Once we go into the operating theater, there are little sensors placed both on the femur bone or thigh bone and on the tibia bone, the leg bone, that communicate with this computer plan. And the anatomy of the patient's knee is mapped using a special pen, if you will, to map the landmarks, and this is reconciled with the CT scan. And a robot then allows us to remove the proper areas of bone to place the implant as intended. So we still need you in the room then? Yeah, the robot does not do all the, <laughs> uh, the burring. It uses a high-speed burr. Uh, the surgeon still does that portion of the surgery in addition to placing the sensors, in addition to creating the exposure to get to the bone, to take off the proper areas of bone. But what the robot does allow us to do is it prevents you from straying from the plan that you have so more mapped precise. out. So why would you want to do this? What are the advantages of this macoplasty versus the conventional way of doing a partial knee, for instance? Sure, that's a great question. The conventional way of doing a partial knee replacement relies on jigs and cutting blocks and much like a total knee replacement or complete knee replacement does. And because you have to place the jig and the cutting blocks, the exposure tends to be a larger exposure. The, so the it's incision more is bigger, you have to open it up bigger like Correct. that. Correct. Mm -hmm. When you pin the cutting jigs into place, this creates little holes in the bone which can predispose the bone or weaken it oh, to, to cause a fracture. And in the early designs of partial knee replacements, that was a significant problem. Secondly, the cutting blocks utilize a saw blade, and the saw blade in very hard bone can actually deflect off the bone and thus be less accurate. Lastly, the whole positioning of the jig and the alignment of the cuts is completely reliant on the surgeon's visualization nice. and estimation of the proper angles. And uh, sometimes in patients that have severe deformity, or who are much larger patients, surgeons can get fooled. So is the recovery quicker and the longevity of these things better, would you say? The recovery of a partial knee replacement, in our experience, is faster in the sense that patients have less pain because it's a less invasive procedure. Yeah. You're damaging less tissue. Uh, and the range of motion return or the ability of the joint to move can be regained much more quickly in many of the cases. And can this be done again if if it, if it falls apart, if it... Uh, much more common than having to redo a 
partial joint replacement is that the other areas of the knee deteriorate. Oh, and if that's the case, then instead of redoing what you've already done, it's typically a conversion to a complete knee replacement. And that's one of the reasons why in the certain subset of patients that are of the right age range, younger patients, say in their late 40s to early 60s, we would prefer to do a partial knee mm -hmm. replacement if we can because some studies have shown that the conversion of a partial knee replacement to a total knee replacement or complete replacement has better results than doing a complete knee replacement at a young age and then having to redo it again later. Just one last question. Is there uh, any future for stem cells with, with knee injuries or damage? Biological uh, substances or what we call orthobiologics is one of the hottest topics it, yeah. of research. Uh, it started first with platelet-rich plasma and absolutely stem cells are uh, being investigated, mm -hmm. either harvested from the hip bone of the patient or from fat. Total knee and partial knee replacements, the technology is always evolving in terms of the bearing surfaces and the materials. Yeah, great. It's a great topic. It sounds like it's a great advancement over conventional treatment. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.